I recently published a video where I explored similarities between Michael Jackson, Rick James, and a couple other funk and soul songs to determine if what this article said was true. Did Michael Jackson rip off Rick James for Billie Jean? And I kept getting this one particular comment from people. Now, I generally try to stay away from the comment section after about the first day or so when I publish a video because that's when the negative comments come that can really get to you. Or if nothing else, you just get conflicting messages like these two comments on the same video mere minutes apart. Anyway, the comment I kept getting was that Michael had actually ripped off Hall & Oates for the bass line of Billie Jean and he confessed to it. I'm a bass player, so this is my territory, but I had really never considered these two songs that similar. But now there were so many people pointing it out, it had me curious. I mean, one guy also pointed out that I look like a f***ing Muppet, but he doesn't realize that I actually take that as a compliment. So thank you, random angry internet man who's now banned from commenting. Anyway, the question we have to answer today is, did Michael Jackson rip off Hall & Oates? Is the baseline in Billie Jean just a cheap knockoff of I Can't Go For That? And there's only one way we're gonna do this. These are the plaintiffs, Daryl Hall and John Oates. They say that Michael Jackson confessed to stealing their hit song, I Can't Go For That, parentheses no can do, for his smash hit, Billie Jean, and turned their lives into a living hell. Sorry, they didn't say that last part. I've just been watching too much People's Court. This is the defendant, Michael Jackson. He never commented on this matter directly before he passed in 2009, but okay, so maybe this isn't gonna work as a People's Court episode. Just roll the clip. We were doing the We Are The World session. Uh, everybody was talking to everybody else because there was, there was just the artists in the, in the rooms. And Michael came up to me, as, you know, in conversation, and he goes, "Hey, man, I hope you don't mind if I stole, st you know, st stole No Can Do." <laughs> and I and I went, "What do you mean you stole No Can Do?" He says, "Nah, man, I used it for Billy Jean." Aha! I knew it. The courtroom is now in session. Let's dig deep both into Billy Jean and I Can't Go for That and see just how similar these two songs are. Your Honor, I'm positive this is a clear-cut case of copyright infringement, and when I'm finished presenting the evidence, you'll agree, and there will be no other learning along the way. No other examples of the baseline in question, no fun mashups, but most importantly, no larger thoughts about this big mysterious thing known as creativity. Also, I promise I won't play the People's Court theme music for the entire video. Let's start from the very beginning of I Can't Go For That, parentheses, no can do. Here's the drum intro from Hall & Oates, and here's the drum intro from Billy Jean, slowed down slightly to match the tempo. All right, these drum grooves are similar. It's a simple backbeat, but there's no way we're gonna win an argument that Hall & Oates invented the backbeat. But while the drum beat is common, the intro is less common. I Can't Go For That starts with two bars of drums, and then the bass is in for eight bars, then 16 more bars of other instruments before the verse starts. Billie Jean follows a similar structure, two bars of drums at the top, bass in for eight bars, then just four more bars of synths before the verse. So not exactly the same, but still, Suspiciously similar intro, Your Honor. In fact, in an interview track on the Thriller 25 Super Deluxe Edition, Quincy says that he wanted to make the intro shorter, but Michael was insistent that that was the part that made him want to dance. So, Your Honor, it appears Quincy wanted a typical pop song intro, a shorter intro, and it was Michael who said, I can't go for that, parentheses, no can do. All right, this isn't exactly a smoking gun. Yeah, the backbeat groove is similar, but that's an incredibly common drum pattern. The tempos are slightly different, and the intros, yeah, they're similar, but eh, there's not enough there. But before we keep going, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video, Deal Dash. Deal Dash is an auction website that's been around for the last 15 years. They have tons of auctions happening every day on brand new items, and some of the deals on here are crazy. Now here's the catch. You have to pay up front to bid. You sign up, purchase a bid pack, like 400 bids for 30 each bid raises the price by one penny, and every time someone bids, it restarts the 10-second timer. Whoever has the winning bid when that timer's up wins the item at the price listed. Deal Dash gave me some bids to try out, so let's see how this works. Oh, a knife set for $2.96? Yeah, I'll, I'll place a bid, sure. If you ran out of bids and didn't win, but you still want the item, don't worry. Deal Dash has a buy it now feature where you can purchase the item at a fixed price, and you get an account refund on the bids. I'm winning! Look at that. This might not be for everyone. The auctions require time and patience, and they only ship within the US and Canada. Ah, as fishing got me. But if you enjoy the thrill of bidding and want to grab crazy deals, use my link with the promo code when signing up and you'll get 100 free extra bids with your first bid pack purchase. I'm gonna do it again. 
$3. And here's the best part. If you don't win an auction using these bids or simply don't enjoy the experience, just reach out to Deal Dash. You'll get your money back, no questions asked, on your first bid pack purchase. Where are you at, as fishing? Check out Deal Dash and use my promo code for those extra bids. Happy bidding. Let's keep going. Exhibit B, Your Honor, the baseline. Hall and Oates, Billie Jean. We're in two different keys here, but the basis of the line is the root down a fifth up a mic. Let me grab the bass. I'll put these in the same key, but basically you got the root down to the fifth, minor seven, back to the root. I can't go for that version as Billy Jean's version is Your Honor. Surely you can hear the similarity. It's undeniable. Sure, it's not exactly the same, but close enough that this constitutes theft. We have evidence. The motive is obviously money. And we even have a testimony. Remember, Daryl Hall says in that interview that Michael told him at the We Are The World session that he stole No Can Do for Billie Jean. Let's roll that clip one more time. And I, and I went, what do you mean you stole No Can Do? He says, nah, man, I used it for Billie Jean. And I said, hey, does it sound like no can do to me? I was going to say it. Wait, 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 bailiff, stop the clip. That was in his head because he, he it was it inspired him. So yeah. well, we don't need any more of the video, just the first part. To me, I thought that was pretty cool that he said that. But I... Well, sh the cat's out of the bag. Yeah, Daryl Hall said that Michael told him this, but he didn't actually hear the similarity himself. Daryl explains that to Michael, this may have felt like he was ripping them off. And there is some similarity there, but... Yeah, these are two completely different songs. Here's the paradox of creativity. Billie Jean is a brand new, separate song from I Can't Go For That, but it's also a ripoff, both simultaneously. Let's unpack this paradox, talk about creativity, and then circle back on these two songs, because as we'll see, this is bigger than one song stealing from another. Everybody steals ideas, everybody. For any piece of art or design or business or fashion or food or whatever, there is at least one thing that you can point to that inspired it, that the artist or designer or chef looked at and went, oh, I want to do that. Or the reaction could be the opposite. Oh, I want to do anything but that. This is traceable all the way through history in just about everything, but especially obvious with fashion. Skinny jeans are out now because Gen Z went, oh, not that. And they were only in because millennials looked at Jinkos and were like, oh my God, not that. That's an opposite reaction, which is one form of inspiration, kind of like anti-inspiration. On the other end is an exact copy. Remember when Tom's shoes were at their height? They had a unique canvas design, and the bonus was that they would donate a pair to a child in need. Well, shortly after Tom's became popular, Skechers launched their new line of unique canvas shoes, also with the added bonus of donating a pair to kids. And the name? F Bob's. Sorry, just Bob's, no f Exact same idea, they just changed the name to a different basic white man name. My point is, Billie Jean is not a pair of Bobs by Skechers. It's a completely different song, even though Michael says he stole it, or stole it. Michael listens to the groove and the bass line of I Can't Go For That goes, oh, I like that. And then mixes that with other influences and makes a brand new song out of it. This is not something exclusive to Michael Jackson. Absolutely every creative person does this, whether or not they're conscious of it. David Bowie said, the only art I'll ever study is stuff I can steal from. Salvador Dali said, those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing. Paul McCartney said that in the early days of the Beatles, I emulated Buddy Holly, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis, we all did. In his fantastic book, Steal Like an Artist, Austin Kleon explains that humans are incapable of making a perfect copy. The imperfection in the process is the point. And the trick is, you don't just steal from one source. You steal from anything and everything that you like. This is why Daryl Hall didn't think Billie Jean sounded like No Can Do. As Austin Kleon says in the book, the reason to copy your heroes and their style is so that you might somehow get a glimpse into their minds. That's what you really want, to internalize their way of looking at the world. If you just mimic the surface of somebody's work without understanding where they are coming from, your work will never be anything more than a knockoff. A knockoff, AKA f Bob's by Skechers. 
Austin Kleon talks about good theft versus bad theft. And for me, Billie Jean checks off everything in the good theft category. He even told Daryl Hall that he stole from their song. But the reason why he doesn't hear the similarity is because Michael has stolen from multiple sources, made imperfect copies, and synthesized it into a new song. And it seems that Billie Jean was an inspiration for another song that came after it. The bass line of Like a Virgin is very similar to the bass line of Billie Jean, just like how the bass line of Billie Jean is very similar to I Can't Go For That. Patrick Leonard, one of Madonna's songwriters, has described Like a Virgin as Billie Jean but in a major key. And Madonna herself has performed a medley of these two songs. This is what all artists do. Madonna, Michael Jackson, even, yes, your honor, Hall and Oates. Bailiff, roll the rest of the tape, please. You know, when I listen to Curtis Mayfield, to every every song I write, I think I'm writing a Curtis Mayfield song. Right. Or at least I'm trying, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not working out. It's a great out. goal to have, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, it, but in my head, I'm hearing that, and yeah. I want I want it to feel like that. I want, it to, I want to get that same feeling from a new song that I write, the way I felt when I heard that song back in the early 60s. Your Honor, here's the bass line from Move On Up by Curtis Mayfield. Uh-oh, does that sound familiar? Your Honor, it seems this musical motif is absolutely everywhere. Including the People's Court theme that I've been using the entire time. The song is The Big One by Alan Two from 1975, and it's another variation of this bass line. I mean, check it out. All of these bass lines are the same and they're all a little different. I mean, in Western music, we only have 12 notes to work with, so there's gonna be some similarities. Creativity then comes not from trying to come up with a completely original idea, but by understanding and embracing that there is nothing truly new ever. In fact, this idea is baked into the universe. No, 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 no. Wait, you're too far deep into this video to click away. Stick with me. It's metaphor time. The law of conservation of mass says that matter cannot be created or destroyed. It just changes states or forms. We've got a set amount of atoms in the universe and everything you can see and touch matter. It's just a reorganization or a remix of those things. Take a potato. You eat it, your digestive system breaks the molecules down, and then those molecules become you. Your brain, your heart, your lungs. But you're not eating just potatoes. You're eating lots of different things as well, and all of those things make up your body. But you're breathing new life into these molecules. And here's the craziest part. When you die, you get buried in the ground, and your body gets broken down, and then you become food for the soil. So you become food for the potato. The whole thing is an endless cycle, and sure, we don't typically actually fertilize vegetables with human remains, but you get the analogy, right? The potato becomes you, and then you become the potato. The inspired thing becomes the inspiration for the next thing, which in turn inspires the next. All we're doing is moving molecules around, breathing new life into them each time. In life and in creativity. So, Your Honor, did Michael Jackson steal ideas from Hall & Oates? Yes, absolutely. Just like Hall & Oates stole from Curtis Mayfield and Madonna stole from Michael Jackson, because that's how creativity and life and the universe works. And you know, now that I got all these potatoes cut up and ready to use, I got Billie Jean drums. I got the people's court. I mean, I may as well cook something up.
Speaking of Curtis Mayfield, that song, Move On Up, it may seem straightforward, but I recently discovered that some people hear beat one in one place and others on a completely different beat. The resulting investigation sent me down a rabbit hole of different versions of this song, covers, samples, and covers based on the samples. So I'm curious, where do you hear beat? Oh, sorry, for that story, you gotta click here. 